Hey guys, it's the History Nerd, and we're here with a new series, Order of Battle Pacific Japan. Why Japan, you may ask? Well, because if we take a look at the uh, starting a single player, we've got Boot Camp, which, uh, if you saw my review of the game, you saw the last mission in it. Then we got Imperial Japan, and then we got the Pacific Allies. So it seems like the order you're supposed to play them is Japan and then the Pacific Allies, number one. And two, uh, I've had... Uh, quite honestly, quite a lot of time with this game. Um, and before it was released, I had about a week with it, and I was playing through both campaigns, and both were, I mean, I don't want to say easy, but I was getting pretty much all the objectives and secondary objectives completed. I was like, this is getting weird. Am I really this good at hex-based strategy games? No. Um, the what I didn't really notice was um, an indicator of the difficulty level I was playing at. The strength of the units were two less than mine right off the get-go. So I was, you know, basically going up against beaten up units. And um, once I switched it over, the difficulty to middle of the road, I think it's Commander, we'll take a look at it when we load up the campaign. Um, Pacific Allies kicked my ass and I lost on the third mission. No, fourth one, because there's Pearl Harbor. So, yeah, the fourth mission. Whereas with the Japanese, uh, I made it, a, you know, further than four. <clears throat> so that's that's basically why. I'm hoping to get, get my skills up with this game with the Japanese and then be able to go on with the Pacific Allies and, you know, kick some ass with the Yanks. Now, uh, one question that popped up on my review, I thought I covered this, uh, but maybe I didn't. If I didn't, I do apologize. There is a scenario editor that you can go into and cook up all sorts of dream, you know, situations that you want to do. So if if you want to make a scenario, it's absolutely possible to do it. So yeah, I thought I covered that, but maybe I didn't. So now I did. So there you guys go. Anyway, let's go Imperial Japan. The American and British imperialists have actively opposed Japan's rightful expansion in China with threats and embargoes. After humiliating all of our diplomatic efforts, it is now up to the Imperial Navy to settle this matter once and for all. <clears throat> so the first mission is going to be Pearl Harbor. Uh, we can see here we've got Imperial Japanese forces as our core forces. We've got no specializations yet because we're just starting off and our difficulty is at the commander level. So uh, when I first started playing this game, I was rolling around on lieutenant and yeah, that was nice for the ego, but not good once I realized I need to be playing this on commander. At least we're not going to go vice admiral or kamikaze. No, no, no. I'm sure there's plenty of channels out there doing that. Um, but you know, that's not me. So... There you go. Let's start the scenario. And if you hear weird sloshing or clicking, I do apologize, but I'm enjoying an iced coffee right now, and it's... Ah, it's delicious. So let's go ahead and continue, and start the mission briefing. Our air raid has caught the Americans completely by surprise. The mission is to cripple the American Pacific Fleet so they can pose no immediate threat to our upcoming offensive. The primary targets will be the enemy battleships. Destroying these will give us uncontested control of the Pacific waters. Additional objectives are fuel depots and airfields to further weaken the enemy's abilities to strike back. Most of the targets are concentrated around Pearl Harbor, but the enemy has other bases on the island as well. Rapidly destroying enemy aircraft on the ground is essential to prevent them from engaging our strike forces. These locations should also be engaged if time permits. We will not be able to achieve every objective, so choose your targets carefully. Once the element of surprise is worn off, the combined fleet will withdraw from the area. Dismissed, and glory to Japan. Let's get this started with the deployment phase. So we can see here what we need to do is just the primary objective. This one's super easy to win. You just have to attack the island for 18 turns. We only have 18 turns to do this. Basically, you've already won as long as you get to turn 18. That's it. So what we're going to concentrate on um, is we are going to take care of the enemy aircraft. 
So we have to destroy eight enemy aircraft and then sink three battleships. We don't want any of these battleships coming back in later missions. And I mean, just taking on aircraft, that's a good idea. So uh, we don't have any dead units, but what we can do is start purchasing some units. And what I'm going to purchase here is a Canco bomber. Now I hear what you're saying. Whoa, history nerd, don't be an idiot. Not only are you overpaying 10, but the Canco is a torpedo bom bomber. You don't want a torpedo bomber on a... Well, I guess, you know, maybe not necessarily. Because we do have battleships to sink. So torpedo bombing isn't a bad idea. But the reason why I'm going to purchase these suckers is because... <clears throat> Oops, let's actually deploy this guy. I turned on... There's an option to go one button mouse or two button mice. Mouse <laughs> controls. So like just, you know, left click controls everything or left click selects, right click moves. I set it to two button because in battle it like, you know, I prefer it. But every now and then my mind's just like, just click. Anyway, the reason why I picked that bomber is because they can switch. Now, I may be mistaken. I was playing around with this earlier and I know it was working. One of those two bombers, you can switch between torpedo and bombs. So it's both. You can do that on the deck of an aircraft carrier, and it's mm, it's a genius idea. I love it. Anyway, that's enough for the deployment. Let's go ahead and get this show on the road. So we got a zero here, and we've got an enemy aircraft here. Well, let's introduce them. Easy peasy. And let's get our torpedo bomber rolling down. Aha, so you see right here? If you land on a airfield or a carrier, you can swap these guys so that they become dive bombers. Which, for future operations when operating on a carrier, is going to be supremo good. Um, what do we got? We got some bombers here, so we'll get these guys moving on in. <clears throat> Actually, what I should have done is sent him up here. So I'll send one of these guys up here. Because what we have here is uh, aircraft on the on the tarmac, you know, not a good place for aircraft to be. So we'll take care of that. And then we're going to come in and with our torpedo bombers, start torpedoing the battleships. We'll get ourselves in line. And as you can see, torpedoes against battleships, hmm, really good idea. So that's it for our forces, I think, right? Yeah, because we're not going to be able to do anything. We could do a strafing run with a torpedo bomber, but I'm not going to bother. Yeah, that's fine. So obviously we're going to have to be dealing with any aircraft fire. Um, but that's not too big of a concern. So let's get a tor that torpedo bomber out. He's fired. Now, one of the nice things about torpedo bombers is you would think that once you drop your bombs, you gotta go back to the carrier and rearm. But you don't. It's just not a cooldown. So we're just gonna do a nice little loop and come back in again. That way we avoid any anti-aircraft fire that's kicking around and we can just, you know, do things, do things at our own pace. Anyway, I'm gonna send this guy back. Total waste of time and money. But we'll be able to bomb them quicker and that's really all that matters. We wanna get those aircraft taken care of before they can take off. Let's get a torpedo bomber flying up ahead. And we still have that radar contact of that fighter. And as you can see, our Zeros had no issue taking care of them. <clears throat> So this guy's got one turn left. To keep track of my torpedo bombers, I just like to cycle them like this. Don't have to do it at all, it's not necessary. But it helps me keep track of them in my headspace, and that's all that matters. We've got another torpedo bomber coming in. And that's good, so next turn both those guys will be ready to launch an assault on those three. And there's really not much for our Zeros to do, so we'll just send them in as fighter cover. 
I think that's it. Yeah, because, I mean, we could strafe a jeep, but that doesn't really matter, and I'll just wind up taking any aircraft fire. Needlessly taking any aircraft fire, that is. So we got a midget sub. We'll start setting him into the harbor. And it looks like we've got an enemy fighter squadron up. So, zero, come this way. And because we're dive bombers, we can just push him out of the way. And we will take some damage, but as you can see, there's not much left of that guy. So I'm not that concerned. I'm gonna take care of all the planes on the ground, and then that's just, that's an easy kill. That's what that is. So, let's move in with our torpedo bombers. Sink you. The one thing you want to be careful of with your torpedo bombers is you always want to make sure they can release their torpedoes over water. So if we were to put our torpedo bomber here, that would be bad news. Not only because there's a fighter squadron there, but he wouldn't even be able to shoot. But now, he can shoot. That guy's on one, so we can cycle him up. And we will take our zero down here. And do some damage to this flight group that just recently took off. That's all our units moved. So now it will be a concern, as you can see, one of our objectives is to not lose more than one aircraft. And we kind of want to make sure we don't lose more than one aircraft. Uh, so we got some more dive bombers coming in, and critically some more zeros. Although, we are fairly effectively taking care of the enemy's air force. And there goes that. Nobody's going to bother us up there. So we can send these guys down. The only problem with, obviously, having, you know, aircraft kick hanging around in the harbor is they're just going to get shot at by these anti-aircraft weapons. We don't want that. So, you guys are on your torpedo firing cooldown. So we'll send you that way, but we've got this guy ready to launch. And so we will. got some more bombers, so we'll send these guys in, and get their zero escorts in, so what this really means is the existing fighters, who are going to be starting to run a little short of fuel, we can start sending them back sooner than later. I'm just going to want to stealthily move that sub in, and hopefully this destroyer won't hit their anti-submarine abilities. My aircraft run low of fuel, yes, thank you. Uh, let's get our bombers down, and we can engage that P-36 huh? with our fighters. We gotta have one more zero kicking around, I knew it. So this is good, because another one of our objectives, you know, we're halfway to getting rid of eight aircraft, which is great. That's a good step. So we'll send you that way. I think we're going to send this guy home. <clears throat> He's taking a bit of damage, and he is one of my core units. So while I wouldn't mind getting him experience, I don't want to see him get shot down. Uh, what do we got over here? You're a zero yet. Yeah, we should probably get you heading back as well. I want to take these dive bombers in on that hangar quickly. And you're not ready to go yet? Right? We could do a shot on a destroyer, but we all know from Silent Hunter... Hitting destroyers with torpedoes is never a good idea. Okay, so what we don't want to do is get caught 
by those recon planes. So let's go ahead. <clears throat> Not that this torpedo bomber attack does anything to thwart. I shouldn't have pulled them back. We can get one more run in with them. I know, I know. Don't take damage, but... It's a good idea. Trust me. <clears throat> After all, we want to make sure... Uh, we sink all those... Battleships. We don't want any of those kicking around being a nuisance. How's your guys' fuel? Still looking good. I guess? Yeah, well, we can send you down here. To show some love to that recon plane. And then what do we got? Okay. Let's move you up. Oh, come on. That's just rude. Yeah, flak's starting to get heavy. Okay, so this zero is definitely done for the day. Um, what do we got here? Another zero? We can pro- well, we need to sink- sink. We need to shoot down this recon plane. Okay. Ooh, I saw red zeros and I'm like, come on. We had to do some damage. And indeed, we did. Alright, torpedo attack. There's the other bomber. And if we circle back around... Almost dead, which is good. Those are zeros, so... Will that do... Yeah, it will. We'll take damage too, though. Okay, so I imagine this guy's gonna go anti-submarine warfare, and if we move it won't really matter. If we move this far, we'll surface and we'll be seen anyway. So, we might as well stay there in case they don't, right? Um, we could probably start our bombing run here. Yeah. I'm liking that. And yeah, we'll just not do anything with you and end the turn. think this can be our last sort of torpedo cycle so these guys can make their way home now and in these missions where you don't have bases or you want to reposition forces or whatever these signify the exit points on the map so that's why we're getting them there next turn they won't be there and we won't have to worry about supplying them or anything of that nature all right, that took care of him. I think I may have screwed up. Oh no, okay, good. Uh, we want a bomber. Is that all of them? No. That should be though. All right, good. Oh crap. Well, that didn't work, did it? Well, no, we can do this. If we come around here... Yeah, we can still get our torpedoes off. We just, you know, take some anti-aircraft hits. But that's okay. We got one last torpedo ready to go. And you... Yeah, we should retreat you. Anybody with five fuel 
should definitely head out. Can't do a torpedo attack with you yet, so we will just sleep you. You still have plenty of fuel. What we want to do is just make sure we um, get any recon aircraft that come along. So we'll just stay out at anti-aircraft range and generally wait for those float planes to pop up and, you know, show them a rough time. Kind of like them with our bombers. <clears throat> okay. So we got one last round of aircraft coming in. We got some bombers and some zeros. All good in the hood. Uh, what are you? You're a torpedo bomber, but you don't have any shots left. So we'll send you on your way. We'll send you in. All right. So that's it for the battleships. Now, we just need to sink some aircraft. That's right, we're sinking aircraft today. Um, you'll get out next turn. We'll just get you guys going and you're fairly... Well, no, we'll leave you out. Because we will need you. And we'll just put you on waiting. There's not much you can do, so we might as well just send you in to see if you can hit any of those guys. And we'll pull you out as well. Right. All that anti-aircraft. <clears throat> but it's a good thing we're here because we need to hit that. Now that P-36 Hawk might make a move for us. So let's take our zero and divert course over that way. And then make sure we get everybody home. We don't want to lose any very important fighters. And by fighters, of course, I mean bombers. Although the fighters are important, too. That is what I was afraid of. There's another scout plane. Okay. Because I had this happen to me earlier today while playing where it was the end, the last turn, and it said that the Americans launched a scout plane, and then I wound up losing the game. Well, not losing the game, but um, in the next mission it said, hey, you know, these guys launched scout planes against you, and now you're boned. So my goal here Obviously, it's to just get the Kingfisher. I don't much care about any of these aircraft surviving. Which sounds cold. Uh, but the truth is, they're, none of them are my personal aircraft. So I don't really care. I'd imagine that would announce that guy's position. So that destroyer should be going all anti-submarine warfare on us. Again, I only need, I think it's just one more aircraft to get shot down. Yeah, and I've decided that that aircraft is the Kingfisher. So, just as long as that happens, in the air and on the ground, our pilots have smashed the enemy air units across the island. Several fighter aces has, have risen up today. So, here's what I get for doing so well with the enemy aircraft. I get... Saburo Matsuki, who's got a plus one against small aircraft and a plus one defense against all air. Um, I would like this commander to go on a core unit. <clears throat> However, I don't have any core units that are fighters. So, 
we will just wait to deploy him next turn. Or next battle, I guess. Um, we don't... I really have no use for this bomber. I got nothing for you to do, sir. So you can just turn around. Who hasn't moved the sub? I'm amazed you haven't done anything. Alright, well, we'll wait this out. Now what I could do is uh, put this commander on this unit <clears throat> and then just transfer him off or pick him up next time for the next mission. But uh, instead... Oh, right, of course. Ugh. Regardless of the element of surprise, the enemy has managed to deal a significant amount of damage to our air units. The loss of these elite aviators is a great loss to our nation. I should have remembered that. Damn it. Oh well. Can't win them all. So what happens when you jibber-jabber instead of, you know, concentrate? Anyway, it looks like these guys just want to farm some zero kills, so we are going to GTFO. And if this guy wants to engage, he can feel free to. Otherwise... It's basically just to be clicking and turn until the end of the mission. And because I have a feeling that that Catalina is going to get away... Then, um, I have a feeling the next mission we're going to have some issues. Anyway, we'll just lead this, uh... P-36 on a wild goose chase over Oahu. And I don't need to get this guy to the exit point, but you know, it's positioning and... I guess we might as well move this up, too. There we go. And fire. Didn't do a damn thing. Several enemy scale planes have managed to launch and escape Pearl Harbor to search for our carrier fleet. If they succeed, an enemy counterattack can have serious consequences. <clears throat> well, we're not worried about that. Japan has achieved a great victory over the Americans today. As the enemy is still recovering from the shock, they will soon realize this is only the beginning of our great offensive. Well, let's continue, shall we? So here's one of the new things going on with the game. As you progress, your army takes on certain characteristics by these specializations. So you get presented with two choices. You can only pick one, and then your units or whatever it affects, you know, is for the rest of time. So in this case, we've got the Bonsai Charge, the Bayonet, and the Gunto Sword are the central weapons of our warriors, symbolizing their martial spirit and loyalty to the Emperor. The Japanese infantry and marines can switch to Bonsai Mode, providing high risk return attacks. Now that sounds pretty, uh, pretty crazy. <clears throat> the Bushido Code provides our soldiers with a spiritual shield according to the traditional ways of the samurai warrior. War is purifying, and death a duty. Japanese units with a red supply deficiency marker deal more damage when attacked by enemy units. So uh, when I was playing through, I picked this, and I realized it only matters when your units get surrounded or if you do a landing without support ships. So I think we're going to go with the Bonsai Charge, and we can see... This is like this is the campaign map where all the little missions pop up. So we had the one in Pearl Harbor and we got these little pinpoints. So the sinking of all battleships at Pearl Harbor prevents these warships from opposing our fleet in the coming months. So if we didn't sink any in the next few missions when we've got sea battles, we would see additional bonus uh, American battleships, but that's not going to happen. Uh, casualties taken during the Pearl Harbor raid has weakened the quality of our carrier based air crews. And that kind of sucks. And that's my own fault. Um, after spotting our combined fleet, enemy counterattacks have managed to damage and sink a number of our smaller warships. So, on the whole, Pearl Harbor wasn't that good for us. I should have been more careful with my uh, aircraft use. 
But you can see what I mean, like with the um, with the recon aircraft. Now I realize that Catalina got through, but I have a feeling even if I sunk it, because those we got that like pop up of those um, recon planes being launched on turn 17 out of 18 that would have still popped up because there's no way I would have been able to kill him. Well, I say no way. There probably would be if I was planning for it, but you know me. Anyway, <clears throat> we can see here the next mission. Luzon, Philippines, December of 1941. The Philippines is the first major target in a war against the Western colonial forces. This protectorate of the United States contains a significant military force which cannot be allowed to exist so close to Japan. And we'll go ahead and take a look at that in the next episode. So let's save this as let's whoops play Japan. Alright guys, well thumbs up if you have enjoyed this episode. Leave your comments, questions, concerns, thoughts, jokes, musings, what have you below. If you wanted to see the Americans, don't worry, they will be coming in a later series, but I'm doing this with missions that I have a feeling I'll be able to win and the offensive nature of the Japanese start it suits me a bit better than the defensive nature of the Americans. So hopefully the Japanese at some point will teach me how to fight a defensive battle. So the American campaign will be easy peasy lemon squeezy. I hope anyway. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching. We'll see you next time.